Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to our kickoff meeting for round 24. Uh, welcome to all of our new grantees. Uh, congratulations to all of you, uh, whether you're returning uh, or you're a completely new uh, person to Affordable Learning Georgia and these programs. Um, while we do this today, I'll ask that you keep yourself on mute until you want to speak. Um, that way, if anybody happens to waltz in and uh, tell you about their day, it's not going on in the middle of our discussions. Um, yeah, uh, other than that, uh, this is going to be mostly about you and about your teams and how everybody can kind of get to know each other and understand that this is a bigger group than just uh, your one grant uh, projects that there's there are a lot of folks out there doing this stuff and you can always uh, reach out and connect to. Uh, so we have just a few things today. Uh, we added another one right at the end after the grant procedures part of it. Um, and that's going to be a little discussion on uh, your barriers and your fears, uh, things about this project that you have some concerns about. And we'll give folks a chance to uh, share their experiences with you as well. Um, but the first thing that we're going to do um, is going to be a walking tour. Uh, I am going to, before I do that, uh, introduce uh, my associates over here, uh, Nikita Afaha, the Program Manager of Affordable Learning Georgia. Uh, hi, Nikita. When you said I'm going to introduce my associate, I figured that's probably me. <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> everyone. Welcome. I'm Nikita Afaha, and as Jeff mentioned, I'm um, the newest member of the team as the program manager for Affordable Learning Georgia. I joined the team last May, so it's not been quite a year yet, but finally Jeff um, has a little, a little help, a little support there. So as he's trying to train me, I'm trying to help out as much as possible. Uh, and we'll do introductions um, in a bit uh, after the walking tour, and this will be an opportunity for every team to get out there and say uh, what they're doing. So the first thing we're going to do is go through some Affordable Learning Georgia resources to make sure that you know what we have available, what's out there, and where your creative materials are going to be after all of this. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen with you very quickly. Here we go. All right. So you have probably seen uh, the homepage to Affordable Learning Georgia if you apply for grants. Uh, so we have a, a new layout. It's a little bit different than what it used to be. We've got a little bit more search stuff up front, some data up front. I'm a big fan of the big number visualization and, and data. Uh, there's a, what we call a mega navigation uh, thing. Uh, this is something that our web designer uh, brought about. So now you don't just have a couple of links that you can click on at the top. You have entire menus within menus. So if you want to learn about us, you can find the missions, the values. You can find your ALG champions, which are extremely helpful. I want to show you a little bit of that here. Uh, so this is uh, the page for your staff and champions. And let's say that you wanted to find uh, the folks who are the go-to ALG and OER people at your institution. Uh, you can go here and you can search through this whole table if you would like. So let's say that I'm at Valdosta and I'm starting in the A's. I can just type that in and there they are. There's Jan, there's Kit, and there's Brian. Um, there is a faculty champion. Uh, that is an instructor who has used OER, who uh, reaches out about their experiences, uh, helps informing faculty and staff and students about it. Library champions uh, who also get the word out and do a lot of outreach, but they're great at um, evaluating and searching and they know um, copyright in a way that uh, that can ease your mind sometimes when you get your questions about copyright. Uh, librarians aren't lawyers, and, and they'll be quick to give you a disclaimer on that. Sometimes there are some scholarly communications librarians out there that have their JD, um, but they are great go-tos if you ever have any types of questions like that. And a design champion. You may be creating materials that you're going to be sharing out with the rest of the world, and you might go, geez, is this is this the right way to do it? Uh, it? And you can totally reach out to instructional designers who can help out 
with that kind of thing. Uh, Nikita is an instructional designer herself. Uh, so yeah, uh, you have champions at your institution. They are all listed here with their email address. Uh, very important page. Um, there are some other things here. Uh, our partners, uh, there aren't too many of them, but we do partner with the University of North Georgia Press. Um, they help out with producing really big peer-reviewed open textbooks uh, and some other materials that you may have been partnering with them on uh, in your grant. Uh, the R Impact page is all about our data. Right now it's up to spring 2023 as we're confirming a few more numbers. Uh, but you can see here that we try to be very accountable about what we do. Uh, the amount of student savings over time ever since we started in 2014 is here. The amount of students that were affected, and that's course enrollments. So it may be the same student going into two different courses. Um, and then the amount of projects that we have funded. Uh, we had at the time more than 800 applications. We have a lot more now. Um, there are some highlights here uh, in the inside our institutions part. These, uh, we tend to look at our no cost and low cost markers in Banner uh, to pull up this stuff. Some of it is extremely reliable. I think University of West Georgia does a heck of an effort uh, to make sure that all of that stuff is up to date and accurate. Uh, some institutions, everybody's on their own. So it is kind of dependent on that. So grain of salt when you look at that type of thing. We've got an Excel version of this. If you ever need to share out like big amounts of data or complex amounts of data, we got it right here for you. We've got annual reports. This brings in everything uh, that is included in your final reports in a summary. So when I talk about final reports a little bit later today, these get shared out in a really neat way um, later on. We have a data dashboard. It is uh, done through Power BI. Uh, it is in kind of a 1.2 kind of phase. We're, we're moving towards a 2.0. You can see that the grand total savings for our grants is included here, not ECOR. Um, these are student savings by institution. This is as of spring 2023. Again, we're trying to confirm some numbers in between there. Um, we've got the student savings by subject area. And if you go over here in this little arrow key, you can go, OK, here's the number of students who are affected. And this changes a little bit here. Um, you can see kinesiology has a lot. It's not just kinesiology. It's also uh, phys ed and wellness and health, that type of thing. Um, then we've got the amount of awards. For some reason, this is zoomed in right now. Not sure why. This is the amount awarded by institution. KSU has a lot, and we actually explain why down here. The IT and computer science departments, hello. Um, they have a zero cost materials degree program for undergraduate and graduate students. They've done a heck of a job with still very competitive rounds in putting together uh, ways to transform their courses and then continuously improve them uh, down the line. We also have uh, a few key metrics on uh, final reports. So the change in student perceptions, largely positive, very much largely positive. Changes in student retention. Um, you can see that it's either unchanged or positive in, in most, uh, negative in some instances. And you can see a little bit of the same in student learning outcomes here too. You can filter this by institution, by subject area. You can even say, well, okay, how about the earliest grantees? What about these round one people over here? Uh, so we have a lot of data. We try to keep it as uh, well analyzed and conservatively analyzed as possible. Uh, we don't want to throw estimates out there that we don't think are sound. Um, we tend to zero out things when we are unsure about things. So you'll see some inquiries for data down the line. That stuff is super important to us because we need to make sure that we let everybody know what's happening uh, throughout our system. Now our grants, of course, you've been here. There's an overview. There's the place you apply. The Grantee Information Center is going to be the big one for you. Um, this page is going to be important and we'll reiterate again that you'll want to bookmark this page, especially if you're a project lead. Uh, you've got your upcoming deadlines for reporting by semester. You got the reporting guidelines. So remember that transformation grants folks, they do a semester status report. Everyone else does a final report. They do not need to do a semester status report. 
We're going to include research grants in here too. It's the same thing as continuous improvement grants when it comes to this type of reporting. We're going to change up a little bit on how that final report is uh, issued because of what we're asking for. Everything has been in the RFP for that. No worries there. Um, yeah, and then resources. So this is where uh, if you wanted to start finding open educational resources, an overview is fine here. Um, we've got links to our repositories, both OpenALG and Galileo Learning Materials. Uh, there is a newer thing uh, where publishers are uh, in a pricing agreement with the system to keep their prices somewhat low for inclusive access materials. So we have a page on that uh, to keep you informed as well. Uh, there are guides for accessibility, uh, for customization, for open licensing, and even a guide for uh, if you are going to put your OER work into your tenure and promotion portfolio, how would you do it? And if you are a tenure and promotion committee, how would you consider various types of OER work? Now, this is obviously not uh, a set of standards that the entire system has to follow. It's a set of guidelines that we hope uh, folks can do, but we've broken it up into research, teaching, student success, and service, uh, the, the four buckets that happened in the Tristan Dunley era of tenure and promotion here. And there's even a newsroom where we announce our news stuff. If you're not subscribed to the newsletter, you can do so here. Um, if you want to find out our latest news that we've gotten out through the newsletter, um, it'll be right here. There's an advocacy kit. We're still working on this. Uh, we'd like to personalize it a little bit more and helping folks get the word out. And as we start ramping up training events, we will have those in ALG events too. So that is the main Affordable Learning Georgia website. Uh, does anybody have any questions on that before we keep going? Seeing some notes. Okay, cool. I'm going to keep going then. Um, the next thing I wanted to show you is Galileo Open Learning Materials. In 2014, when we first started out doing our grant program, we thought, well, there's plenty of great open educational resources out there. So obviously, people are just going to take those open educational resources, bring them into their courses, uh, put their new course together, job's done, great. Uh, people don't have to create a whole bunch of things. They won't do that. They did immediately. They started creating, uh, at the very least, new sets of lecture slides. Um, and they really got into creating new open textbooks, remixing previous open textbooks immediately in round one. So we knew we needed to find a place to keep all of these resources and distribute them with everybody. And so that's where we came up with our first uh, repository of open materials, we called it Galileo Open Learning Materials. Uh, in here, you can browse all the open textbooks that we have, um, all of the adoptions, which we call grants collections in here, and all of the ancillary materials, which are you know things that go around textbooks or may even be taught uh, uh, the entire basis for teaching the class, those materials. Um, but they are not basically non textbook materials, video sets, lecture slides, homework, etc. Um, there's a cool map in here that just shows you where everybody is adopting stuff from. Surprise, surprise, a lot of it is on the East Coast of the United States, but you will see uh, places where English is a second language will adopt them quite a bit. Uh, you see a lot in the Netherlands, in the Philippines, in India, uh, places where at, in various locations in those countries, English is something that everybody learns. So it's making a huge impact, not just in the University System of Georgia, but everywhere. Uh, top 10 downloads of all time is a fun one to look at. The 20 most recent editions also. Um, there's a featured resource that rotates uh, every single uh, time that we do it. Recent editions, these foundations of IT, uh, introduction to anthropology activities and case studies. Cool stuff. Now, this is great for sharing files. Let me show you one uh, very quickly. I'll show you exploring public speaking. This is one of the most highly used open educational resources that has ever come out of our grant program. Um, 
in here, you can see that you download the full text. You can download the Word version, the lecture slides, etc. But you're only downloading things. These are static files. Uh, they depend on your applications and how accessible they can be. But what if I looked at this in a new place? So there's the PDF, right? What if I went into something called OpenALG over here? What is this thing? Well, let's look up exploring public speaking. Over here at alg.manifoldapp.org, we have exploring public speaking, but we have it in a web readable version. If I click on the table of contents over here, I can go right into my subchapter. All right, here's the basics of public speaking, starting with speech preparation. Folks have made some highlights here. Oh, OK. Well, I can see uh, that people have done that. You know what? I don't really want those anymore. Let's turn those off. There we go. Now I can read these. Oh, wait a minute. What's this underline? Uh, folks have been making uh, public annotations as well. You can even create a class with an account, um, and your class can make annotations um, on their own as like a group. Uh, let's say I didn't want those. I can turn those off. Uh, I can turn all these back up. Doesn't really matter. I want sans serif font. I'm sick of serifs. There we go. I can zoom in. No problem. Dark mode. I can expand or I can uh, contract the margins. If I've made a whole bunch of option problems <laughs> for myself, I can reset these all to default and they're all done. So now we have a lot of accessibility options built in. We have readability options built right in. I'm zoomed in quite a bit just so that I can share my screen and show you, but this tends to look a little bit more organized than that. And every manifold entry, this is the new one, right? We started adding this in 2019 to 2020. We wanted something that was a little bit more, uh, a little bit more accessible and community oriented uh, for our open materials. Uh, you can click start reading and you go right into it, but you can also download the PDF. You can download the EPUB version if you've got an e-reader. They even have a Kindle version, so we've made that available too. Um, the folks over there at, uh, at Dalton State also have ancillary materials that are, uh, they're ones that students can't see right at the beginning, uh, things like tests and quizzes and stuff like that. And you don't always want to share those out. You can make your own little form and you can request those materials. So here it is. You can give your name, email, institution, and the, the authors over there, they'll find out, OK, you're a faculty member. Great. Well, we'll send you those ancillary materials. Um, so OpenALG is kind of repository 2.0. Uh, we link to all of our OpenALG materials over here in Galileo Open Learning Materials. So if you ever look in here, you'll find the new stuff too. Um, but this is our newer place. And if you go down, you can see that there are ancillary materials. I could go to the full collection and see all of the ancillary materials from here. Um, let's say that I just wanted ancillary materials for anatomy. I can just do that. Oh, OK, now we have a crash. It's probably because I just put the whole thing through uh, the ring. Of but we do have a tracker on that just in case there's any crashes like that. Um, but yeah, if you go into a place like the Foundations of IT, OK, these materials are coming soon. That's because there's a bit of a delay on them. That's fine. Not a problem. But if you click on, let's see, the common cartridge. This is an entire D2L course that you could plug into D2L and uh, have your cloud computing and application development course ready to go. But not just D2L, any of them. This is the common cartridge. Uh, so these things range from you can download uh, lecture slides, you can go to an entire YouTube playlist about US history. Uh, these are everything that aren't uh, at just an open textbook. So um, alongside that, we have our adoptions. Those are mostly just the grant document reports. It's fine if you do if you're doing a textbook. Uh, a transformation grant project and you're not creating things, you're not planning on creating things, we will still share out your grant reports. Those will still be a blueprint uh, for folks to use when they're adopting those. We also have some training resources. Um, things like the kickoff training are linked here. There's an accessibility series in here too. 
um, the KSU folks put a student success workshop. So nice stuff. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing this. So that was the ALG website, our older repository, which is Galileo Open Learning Materials, and our new one, Open ALG. Uh, does anybody have any questions about these three resources before we keep going? The video folks are shaking heads, but I will wait a little bit here. All right. So what I'm going to do next is uh, go right back to that PowerPoint. And I will, as soon as this loads, turn this over to Nakita for the next part. Uh, so this is going to be introductions. Um, Nakita's got three different spaces for this for uh, each of the different grant types. So take it away. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. Absolutely. Thank you, Jeff, for the for the tour, especially for some of us who are joining uh, the grant process new and, and for myself as I'm learning, this is my actual first kickoff as well. And um, I, I think Jeff will be talking a little bit more about this later, but those options that are the manifold um, uh, vendor that we're using for hosting the open ALG are, are, is an option that you can use. So I think he'll be getting into that a little bit later. So if you saw anything that was impressive or that you might want to incorporate in your projects, we have uh, more information there for you. So let's um, talk about our introductions. So I'm going to call on you by project team. Um, now, I know maybe the team speaker, whoever you decide, doesn't have to be the project lead, but often it is, and that's fine. But introduce your group and your projects. Um, and please, as everyone's introducing themselves, go ahead and maybe, you know, um, put in chat any questions you have for that group. It's always good to maybe connect and um, find opportunities to, to, you know, see what's going on in other people's experiences. So what will happen in the next slide will come up. Um, you'll see the list of projects, the list of project, uh, the project team. And so I'm just going to introduce you and say, hey, um, those from the project team at Clayton State, go ahead and with your with your information um, and then we'll say welcome. And I will then call on the next person. Um, so but you'll see the list there so that you'll know who who's next so that you can prepare uh, yourselves for being able to share. And we've got quite a bit of groups here today, so I'm trying to be brief, but do try to be detailed as to what the project's about and um, the things you'd like to share um, and what you're excited about. So, Jeff, if you go on to the next slide there, or do I have control already? Oh, there we go. We'll just go with that. So we'll start with our transformation grants. Um, and what I'd like you to do is please share, of course, your team members, what your project is, like a general overview, the materials you're planning to uh, adopt or create or revise, and what your, your timeline is looking like, what your process is looking like. And so we will get underway with our first team at Clayton State. Um, if you are here, go ahead and get started and share your information with us. Hi everyone, my name is Chazara Jones and I'm an assistant professor at Clayton State. And I'm working with uh, my colleagues, Dr. Antoinette Miller, Dr. Charlie Harris, and Dr. Camilio Chirescu. And our goal is to like make the, our addictions course, it's a psych uh, 3580 course, right? our goal is to make it more accessible and uh, have the students be more engaged in the course by using OER materials. Um, this is my first transformation grant, so I'm really excited that uh, we received it. And um, the way we're trying to uh, transform this course. Um, it's actually a required course in the College of Health. And so health science majors have to take this course. And it's a really popular um, uh, elective for um, our psych majors. But we're trying to find either a low cost textbook or uh, create our own textbook uh, for the addictions course. Um, so that is our goal. Our goal is to also do that within the first semester. Um, this next spring semester is going to be pretty busy because we're going to also try to include some high impact practices into the course and um, by using like backwards design and tilt. And then we hope to also incorporate some open pedagogy into the class by having students engage in creating discussion assignments that we could hopefully use in future assignments. And 
Um, then we also are trying to incorporate some a technology into the course by really using D2L to look at what the students are doing um, and using the source resources that D2L has to offer regarding that. Um, and then after we complete the course and hopefully it will be ready to go in the fall of 2024, we hope to get the course QM certified because the addictions class is an online course. Um, we want to uh, Quality Matters is a online um, certification course that most of us are certified to either review. And so we hope to get the addictions course QM certified afterwards so that it would be even a greater online course. So uh, it's a lot of work that we have over to do over the next year, but we're really excited um, and grateful for this opportunity. Wow, thank you very much. I'm already anticipating the final report on that one. <laughs> I'm looking forward. <laughs> To reading that you have some really good um some really um very exciting things especially for me as having an instructional design background so you, you said some buzz buzzwords that make me excited can't even talk <laughs> uh thank you very much oh. all right so we'll move right along to georgia southern the next project yeah. there hello everyone this is Yue Zhang from Georgia Southern University i'm an assistant professor in the department of manufacturing engineering I'm working with my colleague, Dr. Bishal Suwal from the Department of Mechanical Engineering. We work on this uh, project uh, transformation project to develop the course material for the course of uh, materials processing. This course come with a lab section. Our goal is to develop a, the course materials, which is the project centered we are going to align our lecture materials with the final project and deliver the student. And uh, this project is, uh, this lecture's materials are, the goal is to lead students to understand the concept and the series through hands-on experience. And uh, this is my first uh, transformation grounds. I'm very excited and I look forward to working with you all. Thank you. Indeed, welcome, thank you very much. So there'll be a lot of first timers here and so hopefully you'll be able to connect with some of them and uh, and you guys will tackle your challenges together. Um, okay, thank you so much. And so we'll move right along to Kennesaw. Oh yeah, from the, um, Dr. Nguyen is not you know, available. He just got a kind of a new surgery. So um, I'm Dr. Karakaya, uh, and uh, we are just working on this project uh, with it, uh, Dr. Nguyen, Dr. Chetikaya, and Dr. Lee. Uh, we will just go ahead and then uh, try to improve um, the uh, computer organization and architecture course. This is kind of an uh, you know, the hands-on course uh, our you know computer science students are supposed to take. And this is kind of the gap between uh, hardware or the engineering side of you know, the computers and the software side. So it's kind of a unique course. Uh, most of the computer science student can see those, um, you know, how the system work on the hardware side. So it's um, so we'll, this is our uh, the first transformation grant. Um, so we will try to uh, make this uh, much more fun for the students. Mm -hmm. Since they're really bored about, you know, they don't want to learn about the hardware side. So we will try to make it much more fun for them. Um, so that's it. Thanks so much. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you again. Again, so far I'm getting kind of excited about the final reports uh, and we haven't even gotten started yet. So we'll go with our biochemistry group at Georgia Gwinnett. Woo! And it's actually a group of one. <laughs> um, it's just me. And uh, I wrote a transformation grant for our biochemistry and advanced biochemistry. It's really biochem one and two classes to get away from using, you know, these three hundred dollar textbooks and to go ahead and develop, you know, uh, open resources that students can use as an online, freely available, copyable, printable text. And so I'm revising something that's already out there. So it's not like I'm starting from ground zero. <laughs> And uh, the idea is to revise those materials during this semester. And then I have a cohort of student testers who have already taken our biochemistry course, one or both of them, to test drive the materials and give me feedback on their usability, their accessibility, um, comparison to the current textbook, which we've used for years, at least 10 years. Um, 
and then uh, implement, use the feedback to revise the materials as much as we can before implementing in both biochem classes in the fall. <laughs> so I had a lot of people when I asked for help on this saying, oh, good luck, you know, let me know how it goes. But nobody actually wanted to get in on the, um, the dirty work of it. So I was like, let's just jump in, give it a try. And I'm really, really thankful that uh, ALG was um, ready to let me give it a try. So thank you. Indeed, sometimes a team of one is what it takes, but uh, the, the passion is still there. We're very glad for that. Uh, thank you very much and welcome. So the second group or individual from uh, Georgia Burnett uh, Computer Networks. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is Dr. Omar Coker. I'm assistant professor uh, at Georgia Gwinnett College, and I will be working with my colleague, Dr. Bintran. He's associate professor. Uh, this is going to be our third ALG grant, and we are very excited about it, just like our first grant. And um, and I'm really grateful to ALG and uh, for, for this grant because our students, they really like the ALG material and idea of having a, having a textbook, zero cost textbook. Um, and we, we did see a lot of excellent trends, uh, like student success rate has significantly improved in those courses where we have used the ALG material because the idea of having a book on the day first with zero cost is always a great idea. Uh, in this project, we will be working on, um, we will customize the existing course material, uh, the net introduction to networks. And the main idea is to put some hands-on labs and, uh, and, and align it with our course goal, plus uh, prepare the student for uh, the industry certification as well. Uh, we will be started. We we already have started working on it, and most uh, we'll 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 complete our write up uh, during this uh, spring semester. And the pilot implementation for our book is going to be in uh, summer, where we will have uh, two sections. One is going to be online, and one is face to face. Uh, so we will get to know that, like what would be the pros and cons, and uh, how both of these mode of uh, uh, students, they react to our material. And then we will take the feedback and customize or tailor our material for the final implementation, which is gonna be in fall uh, 2024. So that's the overall summary, and thank you very much for, for giving us the opportunity. Absolutely, and welcome. Thank you again. It's so exciting to hear how much uh, student feedback and student in, and um, students are going to be participating in some of these projects so far. So it's very exciting. Um, okay, and so we'll move on right along to uh, Georgia Southern, the web page development team. Hello, everyone. Oh. My name is Atif uh, Muhammad. I'm an assistant professor in the IT department uh, of the uh, College of Engineering and Computing, Georgia Southern University. Uh, this is my second time to uh, work with ALG on uh, these projects. Actually, the first project was uh, bringing big success uh, to probably everything around the course, including the faculty, as as even the, uh, like we gain more confidence in teaching these courses after all these improvements. That, be, that, of course, after all the satisfaction we notice with the students now happy about the zero cost of their textbooks and also uh, happy about the material that was really that were really revamped and uh, all the new topics that were that were added to the courses while uh, we uh, we had this project. Now we uh, we moved to the second stage within the same department. Uh, I'm working with two other faculty from the IT, from the information technology department. Uh, uh, Ms. Neda Al Sabah, Bur uh, Kamba, and uh, Dr. Hao Zhang, and both and the, th the three of us from the department, uh, in addition to some other colleagues from the university, will work on four different courses, uh, trying to improve all these courses and hopefully save big money with the with the textbooks. Uh, these two courses are uh, information uh, uh, information technology uh, infrastructure. Uh, uh, Two courses on the information technology infrastructure and the two courses on web development. Uh, so hopefully with the colleagues uh, that we have together, we'll just uh, uh, come to the same satisfaction we had with the previous project. And uh, we um, we are very excited to proceed with this work. <laughs> Thank you again and welcome back. Oh my goodness. Um, I, I'm just so impressed by everyone's project that I keep wanting to make comments after each one, but let me pause and continue to go through the introductions before I temper my excitement so we can get through 
the introductions, but I am still very, very excited to be hearing um, everything that you guys are doing. Um, let's move on then again to our South Georgia State College with our engineering graphics design group. Hello everyone, this is Raf Teloni, Assistant Professor of Mechanical Engineering at South Georgia College. In this project, I'll be working with uh, Dr. Bernard Majdi and Dr. Cindy, Dr. Becky. We are planning to transform at least four courses. Um, our goal is mainly to focus on the engineering courses. The problem that we have in engineering in general is all the textbooks are not up to the standard. You know, in mathematics and physics, you find good graphics, good explanations while in for some reason in design projects and design textbooks some of them will be like cut off and not that aesthetic so we have a plan to have it a industry grade textbooks that will be delivered for free to the students and uh, my final message before i wrap up here to my colleagues who got the grant uh, please uh, do your best to have the quality up to the standard, you can always hire illustrators and uh, other outsourcing as needed. You don't need uh, to be a one man job uh, so that you know your name will be on this project forever. So make sure it represents you. Thank you so much. Indeed, indeed. Thank you very much, sir. All right, so we'll keep moving along um, as I temper my excitement still with Georgia State with our introductory to biology classes. Hello, I'm Dr. April Boston. I've got a team of four, so it's me and Corinne Summerell, and then we've got Jody Osborne and Rubina Zella. And actually, one of the things that you pulled up when you were going through the open resources had Robina already on it, and because she's an instructional designer with Thetlo, so she's done this before. I think Jody might have helped on another grant before because she's good at making figures. Uh, she's a biologist like us, but she's really good at figures. Um, and then Corinne and I are really working on the content for this. Uh, so intro bio, it's a non-majors course. It's two courses that are in succession and we have one lab manual for both of them, covers both courses. Um, and that one, we wanna transform that hard copy into a digital format. Um, so it's a very high enrollment course because it's non-majors. We've got five different campuses that are all teaching the same course. We've got a ton of students. And so we need to make the cost lower, obviously, but because it's so many students that are non-majors, they don't want to spend money on a course that's not part of their major. So that's helpful, but it also gives us the ability for each campus to tailor the lab manual because different campuses, like we all use the same lab manual, but they put it in different orders. So they'll do exercises a little bit differently. And if we put it digital and we allow it to be editable, then they can make it specific for their campus and it makes it less chaotic for the students. They can figure it all out. And so that's the main goal is putting the one lab manual for both sections up, allowing all the campuses to be able to edit it as they need to. Students to be able to, they can still print it if they want, but they can look at it on their phones or whatever. Um, we're going to do most of the work over the summer and it should be ready by fall. Welcome. Thank you very much. Keeping it moving along with, uh, where are we at? We're at uh, Georgia Gwinnett, I think, with uh, physical science. Hi everyone, uh, this is Lee Chung Pan from Georgia Gwinnett College. Uh, so we are working on a project um, to adopt um, the OpenStax Astronomy 2E as the open access textbook for our Physical Science 1 class. Um, we're working together as a big group this time. Uh, me and uh, Dr. Zhenjun Chen Dr. Qin Xiao, Dr. Sharita Moses, Dr. Tai Li, and Dr. Uh, Paul Camp. Uh, we will work together to uh, also tailor make the supplemental materials that are also open access. So this is our um, uh, our goals. We will create uh, some short lecture videos up to 20 minutes for each of the 20 chapters covered in the in the course. Uh, and create 10 short lab videos, up to 20 minutes each. Create a series of class activities to help students understand the concepts. 
and also uh, a series of PowerPoint presentations. We will also analyze data of students' performance before and after the implementation of the project. Um, actually, this is the second time I'm working on uh, an ALG project. Um, uh, the, in the last two uh, years, we worked on another one, uh, adopting uh, OpenStax college physics uh, textbook for our introduc uh, introduction to physics class, and it was pretty successful. So, um, so we're planning to do more. Thank you. Absolutely, you're welcome, and welcome back. And so that's some of the things that is such a benefit of being able to be a second recipient is being able to having gone through the process before and being able to. Uh, Take it kind of to the next level the next time. So, so exciting. And so we have another physical science team um, with the Albany State. Yes, ma'am. So I'm Doreen Medlin, <clears throat> excuse me. And we have we have a three member team and I'm really proud that we're representing physics, chemistry and earth science. And <clears throat> the um, the other thing that I like about our, our team that I think is kind of special is it is a collaborative effort between the natural sciences and education. And since we have non STEM majors, um, sometimes it's easier for the for them to understand some of the academic language if we if we help them transition from the kind of simpler language to the academic language for scientific use. So uh, it's a continuation grant. We just completed our physical science one, and now we'll be working on physical science two, which with the emphasis on chemistry, physics, and earth science, as I said. Um, one of the things that we're focusing on, one of our goals is to link science to the real world so that our non-STEM majors understand the importance of how it can be applied. So they don't have to ans ask that question, why do I have to learn this? We're going to make sure that when they're taking the course, they understand why they have to learn this. And we're going to do it with content development, inexpensive labs, um, project-based activities so that they'll be working in small groups and having a lot more engagement between the students and having them kind of develop a relationship between science and the students. Um, we will have a special focus on helping our non-STEM majors be more comfortable using the scientific academic language. Um, so I'm excited about this. Uh, I think our students do great. Um, they'll do even better after they get this kind of textbook. I resonate with that quite a bit, especially with my instructional design background, trying to uh, adhere to the student needs. So very, very good, very exciting. And so let's keep it moving again um, with uh, where we are, Georgia Southern University with our Introduction to Special Education class. Hi, I'm Eric Landers. I'm working on with um, Adam Carrion and uh, Kimberly Harris. We are doing Intro to Special Ed for graduate students. There's about seven classes over the summer. Um, books typically cost just like everywhere else, $150, $175. Um, so we are um, putting together um, all of the um, all the critical information for that. It's required for every every one of our graduate students that are um, that are in our MAT programs in the initial cert programs. Uh, this is our second one. We did one for our undergraduate, um, and that is uh, that went really well. Um, and in fact, I turned in my report. Uh, four months early um, by mistake. Um, so so Jeff had to tell me to cool it down just a minute. So so he sent it back to me. Um, but yeah, we're real excited and uh, looking forward to getting it done this spring and implementing this summer. Indeed, thank you very much. And if anyone else wants to get ahead of the game and send early reports, I don't think it'll be too much of a problem. <laughs> we will, we will, uh, we will definitely appreciate that. I'm glad it went that well. So let's move along to University of West Georgia. Hi, I'm Matt Franks. Um, I'm a professor in the English department at uh, University of West Georgia. Um, I am working on a uh, solo project, um, writing a small, uh, slim, but hopefully very adaptable and up-to-date introduction to literature textbook for our intro to lit class but that can also be used in lots of other literature classes. Um, our problem is, you know, they're very yeah, expensive textbooks, as, as everyone else has said, but also they're just like huge. They're like all the intro to lit textbooks are like a thousand plus pages. And, you know, in a semester, we only read a little bit of them. Um, and that's because they include lots of short stories, poems, plays that, you know, instructors can select which ones to have students read, but then they're paying for all of these other, um, all this other material that they're not using. So our my uh, new resource is just going to be uh, 
basically like short chapters, like introducing key terms and um, tools, you know, how to talk about things like plot or sounds and poetry, those kind of things um, that then instructors can pick their own short stories and poems to pair with those readings. Um, so it'll be much more kind of manageable, open, free, um, and, and flexible. Um, and the other thing about, um, about my goal is to make it really like a textbook for the 21st century um, and make it really sort of about using traditional literary studies approaches to apply to things like video games and film and um, you know other kind of media and other areas that students will sort of be engaging with in their careers. Thank you very much. I can remember even as far removed as I am from my intro literature class in undergrad what it was like to carry around that book. <laughs> um, yeah, so thank you very much. Okay, so Georgia Southwestern States with our fundamentals of speech. Hi, I'm Mark Laughlin. I'm the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, and this is my second ALG grant. I did one for music appreciation about five or six years ago. It was uh, extremely successful. It's still extremely successful. We're still using our OER to this day and saving students money. So this time around, we're using it for fundamentals of speech, and um, we're really hoping it was it was well. Before I say that, it was uh, kind of funny because we're adopting the the textbook that you used for the example earlier or that was used earlier from Jeff, um, and so we're going to be uh, adopting that for our, our courses, and we're really hoping to utilize that because our um, our team members, Dr. Don John Carter. Dr. Ashley Jones and Haley Henderson uh, really are all experts in experiential learning for our students. And we're hoping to be able to adapt that to include some more experiential learning within the uh, classroom setting for those students. And um, it's also going to be part of our, our HIPS, which is part of our, our new QEP for the institution. So we're kind of, it's, it's a all encompassing uh, attack that we're coming up with it uh, to be able to use that. Um, we were planning on doing this, um, you know, early in the fall semester. So we are actually going live this semester with our courses. So they're they're ready to rock and roll. Um, now we're also utilizing the gift uh, feedback so we can get the students involved in the you know the way that we're using the textbook, the way that we're using experiential learning, um, you know, before the end of the, the term, so we can adapt as we go. So. I'm really excited to see how that uh, works out and, and to see where that comes comes from from those um, side of things. So we're really excited and we're uh, thank you for LG for the opportunity to do this again. Absolutely welcome and thank you very much. If you happen to see a few people smiling or laughing, including myself while you were speaking, there's some comic relief there waiting in the chat regarding the challenges of working with uh, QEP programs and plans. So uh, we apologize, but um, certainly wasn't at what you were saying, uh, except for the challenges that we all have experienced. So let's move right along. We have Middle Georgia State Mass Transformation Grants here to talk about their Introduction to Computer Programming uh, project. Hello, everyone. My name is Myung Jae Kwok. Uh, I'm a professor of information technology at Middle Georgia State University. I'm working with doctors Kevin Floyd, uh, Jonathan Jenkins, and Jubam Kim. Uh, for this project, we are developing course materials and an interactive online learning platform for our four introductory programming language courses of our two undergraduate programs, Information Technology and Computer Science. The goal of this project is to provide our IT and CS students with an affordable and effective tool to enhance their understanding of fundamental programming uh, concept through an interactive online learning experience using Python. Uh, we are really excited about this um, opportunity. Thank you. All right, thank you everyone, especially our Transformation Grants uh, teams. Um, welcome to all of you who are your first timers, as well as those who are returning. We really do hope that um, on your own, on your own initiative that you will connect with each other as, as necessary, maybe talk to other teams, that have done it before you um, to get some tips and some some uh, you know some inside information about how to make sure your own project comes about um, as smoothly as possible. 
So we will move on to the next slide, Jeff, if you'll help me with that, um, so that we can get our introductions with the continuous improvement grants. And as Jeff mentioned, you might have noticed in the chat, um, this part does take a little while, the introductions, but again, it's important that we share with each other um, our projects for um, more than just the introduction, but for the connection and the context of, of what we're trying to accomplish. So we'll start with our continuous improvement grant. Same thing, share your team members, please. Um, your kind of general overview for your project, what materials you're planning, um, and then what your process or timeline might look like. Uh, and we will get started with uh, Georgia Gwinnett College, and uh, we welcome them here. They had a little meeting, but they were uh, at school, but they were able to make it in this morning, so we're very happy. We'll go ahead and share that with your pre-calculus team. Hi, this is Rabia Shabazz. Um, so my team members are Dr. Uh, Jamie Curry, Dr. E. Katrina Nathanson, and Sarah Park. And we wrote a transformation grant a couple of years ago where we revamped our uh, in-person pre-calculus classes and we made it more of an active learning um, classroom. So we used blended instruction. We developed activities where students just came into the classroom and just were in the groups or doing different activities. So this time around, we wanted to write a continuation grant to uh, transform our online classes because we're offering so many online asynchronous and synchronous classes. We wanted to modify those activities so they can be used in the online setting. So we will take some of those current activities that we have and we, we might develop more uh, just so our online asynchronous and synchronous classes, uh, students can uh, interact with each other, you know, when either they're meeting, you know, live meetings or they're not meeting at all, they can still interact and do group activities and, and understand the concepts more instead of just, you know, listening to lectures and, and doing homework. So we will develop activities for online classes, basically. Makes sense. Thank you very much and welcome to you and your team as well. All right, moving along to Georgia Southern, they've got a planning and instruction, planning and instruction for secondary education, educators project, sorry. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Alicia Muldaven and I am actually working with Drs. Nancy Rumler, Janelle Smith, and Don Cannonrich. And um, this is actually a continuous improvement grant uh, that continues the success that we had previously with the transformation grant in rolling out um, a text called Keys to Teaching Success. Uh, we are in the College of Education and all of our um, teachers are being trained and they have to go into the fields and their student teaching and having their seminar courses. And so there's just so much going on that they all have to prepare for the intern keys, which is really important because when they become a teacher, they'll have to be evaluated on that. And so there's no current text that really goes into depth about each of the standards. And so we see this as an opportunity um, through Georgia Southern to be able to develop and add on to some of the standards we've already created, but also um, maybe even have this shared beyond just Georgia Southern to either te teachers that are in the field needing some review or even other universities. And so um, we already have standards nine and 10 fleshed out and being used and being reviewed currently and that targets professionalism and communication, which are kind of the very <laughs> most important, but yet at the bottom of the pack. Um, now we're going to standards one, which is targeting professional knowledge and pedagogy, as well as standard seven, um, developing a positive learning environment. So just compiling a bunch of resources to really support our teacher candidates as they're working in the field and even go beyond um, to use this as a resource, hopefully throughout Georgia. Thank you. I appreciate that so much. And thanks to Jeff as well, explaining a little bit about the, the table here, how it was set up with the et cetera. But um, it, it's really it's really exciting to me to see how these projects are not only going to affect the students in their individual learning experiences at the college, but going forward. And in this particular case, students of the future. So I'm very, very excited to, to have you guys um, with ALG and putting your project together or continuing to improve it. Thank you very much. Let's continue to move on. Um, tempering my excitement is not working very, out very well. So <laughs> I'll keep going here. Kennesaw State, we have circuit analysis team. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Craig Chin. I'm an associate professor in the electrical and computer engineering department here at Kennesaw State. Um, I'm working with a team of professors, um, Dr. Sandeep Das, uh, Dr. Hoseon Lee, and Professor Sheila Hill. 
Uh, and we're working on uh, developing a, a question bank application uh, for the circuit analysis course. Um, so circuit analysis uh, as a course is one of those um, uh, foundational gateway courses uh, in, in electrical engineering and computer engineering programs. Uh, and the uh, one of the big impediments for um, you know, adopting a, an open access resource is that this course has a, has a, a, a real emphasis on, on problem solving. And the benefit of traditional textbooks is that they have this wide array of, of questions um, that are, are provided. And, and so we wanted to develop this ancillary uh, material or this, this app where we would be able to, um, you know, generate uh, questions, um uh that would be of, of different tiers of difficulty and that would both be for um student practice as well as for professors who, who want to generate a uh, um or, or to use a, an open access textbook that may not have the wide array of problems but to use that to also uh generate assignments for, for students as well and so that's what we'll be working on um over this year Indeed, thank you very much and welcome. It's it's good to hear the projects that are helping to, um, you know, um, maybe advocate some of the benefits of open open educational resources over the traditional ones by providing some of the same features, right? Um, and in addition to that, seeing how this is working out in a gateway course is important as well. We'll get to um, the research grant uh, introductions in a little bit, but just keep in mind, everyone, as you're working on your project this year, um, other questions you might want to answer and, and take participation participate in the re the new research grants that are now out um, and maybe answering questions like how OERs affect gateway courses is one of them. So um, thank you so much for that project. And we'll move along. Um, I almost forgotten where I am. Oh, yes, another Kennesaw State with our software design and development. Hello, this is Dr. Shirley Tian. I'm from Kennesaw State University, Department of Information Technology. And I'm working with Dr. Chloe Xie, Nazma Sakibs, and uh, Liang Zhao, and uh, Dr. Lin, uh, Lin Lei. So we are working on a uh, revised uh, master's program for IT. And actually, uh, our department offers uh, zero degree since 2020. That means uh, for both undergraduate and the graduate courses, we, we do not use any textbook. And thanks to strong support from uh, ALG for the past years, and uh, um, and now all the courses from MSIT program have now replaced their textbook with no cost to students OER learning materials. Uh, and this, in this round, we are going to revise one foundation course for MSIT program uh, for software design and development, and another three courses are IT system acquisition and integration. Uh, enterprise cloud and wireless security and enterprise AI applications. So, um, yeah, so uh, in the last, I would like to thank you, ALG, again for the continuous support for our programs. Thank you. Very well. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And um, we throw it right back in your in your court with the appreciation for uh, the dedication to the um, to student success through this way. Um, and hopefully as our transformation grant introductees, right, are the grantees are listening to the continuous improvement projects, they're getting ideas about um, what they may perhaps submit for the next round uh, for continuous improvement in their own new projects. So keep keep the ears open and listening to all the innovations that are happening here in continuous improvement. Uh, let's move along to University of West Georgia. We have a advertising practices project. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Agnieszka Fiałkowska, and I'm an Associate Professor of Marketing and the Director of Assessment for Richards College of Business. A few years ago, I received a transformation grant for this course uh, because I realized that while many traditional textbooks teach students important advertising concepts, they really leave them uh, without understanding how these concepts fit together when they actually have to develop an advertising campaign. So at the end of that uh, grant, I developed advertising campaign workbook, which walks students through stages. And at the end of the class, we they all develop an actual social campaign. 
And so over the course of several semesters, I've been collecting feedback from students. They complete a survey at the end of each module, and they have been really generous with their time in terms of commenting on different concepts um, and parts of the textbook in exchange for having this class at no cost. And, uh, um, and I was also looking at their performance on different test questions and how they perform on other assignments to identify some areas where they still struggle. Um, and um, uh, as a result, I came up with a long list of different concepts that could be in, uh, presented perhaps in a better way or in a way that would, uh, we have diff students with different learning styles. And uh, one of the comments was that, they would like more short videos, not necessarily a lecture that covers the entire uh, class time or module, but they really want, you know, just a minute or two to explain specific concepts in this class. Uh, so that's uh, one of the major uh, goals for these continuous improvement grants. They would also like to see more infographics or visuals that would illustrate those concepts and how they fit together and more examples, short mini cases, not necessarily long cases. Uh, so and that will be uh, the purpose, uh, the objective I will try to um, meet over the course of the spring and summer to implement these changes during the fall semester. And I failed to mention that I will be recruiting student assistants to participate, provide feedback and uh, help in developing the content. Thank you very much. Thank you and welcome back with the continuous improvement grant. Very, very good stuff. Um, all right, so we'll continue to move along. We have our database management systems team at Georgia State University. Hello, everyone. Happy New Year. Uh, my name is Shigang Hong. I'm an associate clinical, clinical associate professor and in computer information systems at in Georgia State University. And with the second time they received the LG grant to create open course materials. Uh, we are a three member team, Dr. Veda Story. Uh, she has a, a scheduled conflict and could not be here. And we have a um, team member, Dr. Amerita George. Uh, she's in the attendance list. I would like to her to introduce herself. Amrita, can you turn on your webcam? Uh, well, uh, I guess uh, I'm just continuing to talk. Uh, three of us have been teaching database classes and data analytics and other courses. So in this project, uh, we want to create an open course on relation database and the SQL. It's a very important knowledge and a skill for students study databases, data analytics, and then other IT uh, subjects. Uh, we, the team, we started a research project last year, which I mean 2023 now, um, try to understand the impact of AI tools like a chat GPT and student learning in the classrooms. So we want to use this grant opportunity to create an open course to incorporate AI tools like a chat GPT in the learning of the course materials and practice. A very important part, as we know, all the online courses is where is the assistant? You get into troubles, you get into issues or questions. Where do you turn on to get help? So we want to create, use, uh, leverage the AI tools like a chat GPT to create something like a teaching assistant available 24 hours and seven days a week. So we want to incorporate all those ideas we, we do in our research project and create this open course and we plan to get a work done. We, we plan to start a work, create the course in the spring and a try out in our classes and be ready to submit in this fall. That's it. 
that's enough. <laughs> it's lovely. Very, very, um, you said that's it. I'm thinking, no, that's not just it. That's a lot. And that's um, really, <laughs> really exciting. So that's why I said that's enough. No, it's, it's quite a bit. Um, so thank you very much for sharing that with us. Looking forward to that final report as well. Um, of course, AI is quite the buzzword around here. So we'll be looking forward to seeing how that works out on your project. Um, mm. So yeah, thank you, sir. All right, so Kennesaw State with our technical writing. Hi everyone, um, my name is Tiffany Tiarina and my teammate is Tammy Powell, she's also here. Um, I have actually done quite a lot of these ALG grants. Um, this is my 12th overall and my ninth as primary investigator. Um, Tammy and I are two of the primary authors of an extremely successful open textbook from an early grant round. Um, we developed it in round three, I think. Um, and that's called Open Technical Communication. Um, we've done several continuous improvement grants on that uh, over the years, and that commitment actually uh, won us an international award in 2022 for it. Um, and so, uh, but for this, I guess anyway, for this project, um, we're actually sort of stepping away from the direct improvement of that textbook. Um, and instead are going to develop a supplemental textbook, a smaller one, um, that is specifically dedicated to instructional design for technical communicators. Um, and this idea was born out of reading an article that came out last year um, from actually from one of my professors. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in a PhD program, so I read a lot of articles from my professors right now, but, um, but I read an article from him last year that um, showed that there's a severe lack of coverage of instructional design topics in tech com textbooks, um, both commercial and open, including our own. Um, and so the basically they like they said that they all cover written instructions, but that's pretty much it. Um, and so this supplemental textbook is going to be designed. Uh, we're going to design it for use with OpenTC. Um, but it'll be compatible with pretty much any tech comm text, um, it, including those that are not open. Um, and it's going to dig deeper into those instructional design topics um, that are relevant to uh, technical communicators. Um, we're hoping that because of that giant gap that exists, um, that we'll have a lot of adopters from all different walks and who are using all different kinds of materials and maybe turn a few more heads towards OER with that. Um, the book is going to have six chapters. Um, two of them will be remixed from content that we already have in OpenTC, and then four are going to be completely new. Um, and uh, we might work an open pedagogy project into it, um, maybe have some visual design students uh, design our book cover for us. Um, that's something that I'm currently doing with another project, and it's gone really, really well. So I think it might be a good idea to do with this one as well. Uh, but we haven't actually planned that yet, so <laughs> we'll see. Um, for timeline, we are looking at one chapter per month and uh, and then one more month for production. Um, I started us off last month by developing a style sheet for us to follow, and then from this point forward, we're going to work together on all chapters, um, try to keep a uniform voice by doing that instead of splitting them up. Um, We'll have two passes of editing done on each chapter, and uh, and then we're going to develop. Um, we'll have a manifold ebook. We'll have a uh, sorry, open ALG ebook. Same thing. Um, a printable PDF, an editable Word document, and then an at cost print version um, that we'll set up through Amazon's uh, printing thing that we've also done with our other textbook. Um, so that last month will be spent doing all of those different all those different versions, um, but that's it. And there again with the, the summary of that's it in my mind, I'm thinking that's it. No, that's a that's a lot. That's, <laughs> but uh, thank you so much. Uh, and Tiffany, if you saw again um, and I call you directly like I know you personally, she's actually a previous member of our team. And so um, if you saw our my face as I'm laughing and smiling again, it wasn't at your commentary. You'll read the chat. There's some more comedic interlude there for, for you, um, and you'll see why there's such smiles going around. Um, thank you very much for sharing that with your, your project with us. And let's move right along. There's another project from Kennesaw State with IT policy and law. 
Hello, I'm Donald Privatera with Kennesaw State University. I'm a lecturer um, there. Uh, this is um, my first time as a project lead. I've worked on two um, ALG projects before as a participant, um, and I'm looking forward to uh, helping to unify uh, our team and, and bring our team um, together to make some changes for uh, our university. Um, we are doing a um, uh, we're doing a continuous improvement project. Um, we've got uh, uh, four participants uh, under under me who are uh, uh, Jamie Jamison, a lecturer, Foster Scotland, a lecturer, uh, Dr. Nazma Saqib, a professor, and uh, um, Darren Morrow, a lecturer. Um, we're going to be working on improving four courses. Um, IT policy and law is just one of them, but we are also have network configuration and administration. Um, we have pr uh, professional development and entrepreneurship, and we have software acquisition and project management. So as you noted, um, you know, we've been at, at, at our IT department's kind of been um, heads down with ALG for quite some time and um, all of our courses are um, textbook free. Uh, so, you know, these are uh, changes that um, that we're going to be making to improve uh, these courses along the lines of, um, you know, revising the open uh, educational resources, uh, creating ancillaries and, um, re you know, replacing OER. Um, uh, with new OER. So um, so we're looking at all these incremental changes. Uh, as far as our timeline, of course, we're um, just getting started like everyone else and um, we'll be on schedule to complete at the end of this year. So anyway, um, yeah, thank you so much for the award. Uh, we look forward to um, uh, working on additional projects in the future and uh, we'll, we, we look forward to this particular project in specific. Thank you and welcome back again. Thank you very much for sharing that with us and we will keep it moving with University of Georgia. We have a web development team. Hi everybody, uh, John Weatherford from the University of Georgia New Media Institute here. Um, I am uh, the team lead for a team of four. Uh, Chris Gerlach is on our team and then also here with me on the call are Kyla Sterling and Tyler Masaryk. Um, and uh, I'll do an introduction and they can toss in anything else they'd like to say. Um, until Tiffany went, I was going to be all excited to say that this is my second uh, ALG grant, but now I'm questioning all of my life choices. Um, but that's fine. Uh, neither here nor there. I am really excited about this continuous improvement grant. Um, we have a really uh, have we have a lot of OERs in our department. Um, almost all of our courses are OER based, and I think the ones that aren't do qualify for low cost uh, status. Where we try to be really thoughtful on that whole front. Uh, but the one we're working on here is probably our most heavily trafficked for our web production course. We are a uh, our institute runs two programs. We run either, depending on the semester, the largest or the second largest certificate program at the university. And then we also have a rapidly growing master's program that has both an online as a and a residential version. And across uh, all of those programs, the uh, we have a required pathway of courses with a bunch of electives, but the only required technical course across all our programs is this web development course. And so we have, uh, I think when we submitted the application, maybe eight different instructors using this OER on an ongoing basis. Um, and we have hundreds and hundreds of students with tens of thousands of page views. So we're really thrilled that uh, it's getting so much use. The challenge, as you might imagine, is um, keeping up with ever-changing technological needs and best practices. Um, and so the last time we worked on this OER substantially was in 2019, 2020, and did some really fantastic uh, major revisions then. But, you know, it's been three, four years now. And so there are uh, several major components we need to update. WordPress in particular uh, has had a complete paradigm shift for how they uh, compose sites and build elements on sites. And so we need to uh, bring in full site 
data editing and block editing there. Uh, we're rethinking the role of JavaScript and some of the approaches we use for teaching that there. Um, and then just keeping up with other smaller changes with best practices for CSS, HTML, and some of the, <clears throat> excuse me, front end frameworks we use. So um, I feel like we've got a great plan and a really good experienced knowledgeable team uh, working together on this grant and excited for the impact we're hopefully going to have uh, across the next round of students to use this. Kyla, Tyler, anything else you want to toss in here that I forgot? No, I think you covered it. John just wanted to say that we're very grateful for the opportunity with this grant. I think that'll do it for us. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And um, welcome back. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, definitely. Um, Tiffany has been 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 in the in the ALG space for a long time, but uh, we are still very impressed to have you back with us again. Uh, so let's look at our intro to physical physical anthropology team at the University of West Georgia. Yeah, hi, that will be me. Um, I'm Isabel Maggiano. I'm a senior lecturer here. Um, I'm receiving this grant together with uh, my colleague and also happens to be my husband, Dr. Corey Maggiano. And we received this grant um, to, or an, um, not an improvement grant, the original grant in, I guess, three years ago um, to, you know, employ this OE relatively back then, I think it was pretty brand new OER for intro to biological anthropology, which we're using, we're just changing the name of the course to that um, as well. Um, well, it turns out, I think maybe a lesson learned for some here, I don't know, but um, it was a multi, it's a, it's a multi-authored OER. And I think some, some of the authors, um, they decided to kind of add their own little book in there. <laughs> so there were a lot of complaints that it was just too long and that it was um, not really like student friendly. So there's a new edition now um, that has already come out um, just two years after that first one. And um, so we're getting this improvement grant um, to first adjust our um, course to this new edition, which really has like changed authors, et cetera. And like several chapters are not even existing anymore. And then also we're excited um, to have submitted um, an application to add a, a lab section to this intro to physical or biological anthropology course, which um, the OER that we're using is also um, supplying a lot of different labs and activities which are perfectly suited to actually um, use directly for that lab section. Um, so it'll be a really nice package and um, that we can create here. Um, um, with OERs and then also hopefully um, get some more students, you know, because right now it's the course is only um, for non-science majors, um, but um, it'll then be also a course that science majors can take. So we're excited about that and that's it. <laughs> very, very good. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And uh, well, our last and continuous improvement grant uh, team here, our general chemistry at University of Georgia, if you'll share. Hi, my name is Iman Abdurrahman, and I am a lecturer at the chemistry department at the University of Georgia. And uh, alongside my colleague, Matt Sievert, he's also a lecturer. Uh, we are working to revise uh, ancillary materials, specifically um, chemistry two recitations. So a little bit of background on what we do at UGA is um, we adopt team teaching. So a team of instructors teach together, use the same textbook, use the same ancillary material, including the recitation session. And specifically recitations, I've seen a lot of success with them with like our national averages increasing um, and our withdrawal rates just dropping about 15 percent. Uh, specifically, we adopted recitations uh, during the pandemic and we've continued that and we're using um, the ALG grant, which uh, we are very grateful to have received um, to ensure that there is consistency across the courses in general chemistry one and two. So Matt is actually teaching general chemistry one and he's collaborating with me to renovate general chemistry to and continue um, that hopefully this year. And our timeline basically um, from 
but January to May, we are going to work on the recitation material, creating them, modifying them, revising them, and we're going to be collecting feedback from the instructional team. And um, between April and May, we will be distributing surveys to the um, CHEM 1212 or CHEM 2 um, students to collect feedback on how they feel about the material. And then um, June, uh, we will be working and to go through the revisions from the survey and then from August to December we'll be implementing those revisions in the recitation sessions and then we'll be sending out an additional survey to see how the, these revisions went and that's it. Thank you I appreciate that just typing a quick note to Jeff. Um, thank you very much. Uh, again, yeah, I'll say I'll say yes to that. OK, thank you, sir. <laughs> Very good. So, uh, yeah, the, twi the quick note I needed to answer uh, quickly uh, because we're going to pause here just for a quick little break. Um, thank you, everyone, for your for your introductions in both the transformation grants and the continuous improvement grants. Um, thank you. Um, our, our just most recent introduction. And she again, she said that's it. And it just it's not. <laughs> it's, it's quite a bit. Uh, uh, so thank you so much for sharing that. We have just a few more introductions left for our research grants, which is piloted for this round. But before we go there, let's just take a pause of, of just a quick few minutes break. Jeff, will you give us some instructions for, for this break? Yeah, uh, just go. put stuff on mute. And if you need to get a drink of water, buy a break, et cetera, uh, just take five. We'll come back at 226. All right, we'll see you guys in a second. Hi, Nikita. Mm -hmm. Hey, I am testing my internet connection. I am remote working today since we're not back on campus yet. Is Can you hear an echo? 
No, not so far. Everything's fine. Okay, because I the, the internet connection has been going in and out. So I've got, I'm signed in on my phone, but I put my phone on the other side of the room. So I'm hoping the two aren't going to interfere. So if I need to switch over, just let me know. I will definitely do that. And thank you very much for the heads up. Yeah, and actually, no you've actually helped us usher back into our, our break. It's 226. So, oh, cool. Um, yep, we are. We're back actually 227 now. So I uh, want to welcome everyone back from our break. Hopefully, as we're able to just wet your throats a little bit. And we're going to wrap our meeting up here um, now. Uh, so we're going to move on to the next slide. If Jeff will help me with that for our final. Oh, just, uh, go ahead, sorry. just a little bit, uh, because I did say 226 because we started at 221. OK. Yeah, just want to make sorry. sure that everybody's able to get back. Everybody's here, yeah. My apologies. No yeah. problem. Because I've, I've got 227. That's why I thought so. Oh. Yeah. OK. Wow. All right. And mine is at 225. That's odd. And mine's is at it... 225, too. And I was sitting here going, oh, no, my computer's about to crash because my internet connection is going. And now my clock is messed up. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. As I look at my phone, my phone says 225. My computer says 228. So my apologies, everyone. So oh, no. uh, let's. Jeff, if you wouldn't mind letting me know when we should start back, because I have well, something going on with my remote work. <laughs> well, we've been uh, we've been talking long enough. It is now 226. So uh, let's get going. Here we are. My apologies for the confusion, everyone. So, yes, welcome back. Uh, hopefully you did get to, to you know, get uh, 225. Yeah, <laughs> not sure. IT help. So um, we have now just a few more introductions, please. Thank you guys for your patience. Again, we do hope this is helpful, not only for um, the context of, of what's happening with all the grants, but as you think in the future, um, things you might wanna do in the future and connections and networking that you might wanna make regarding your projects um, and to inspire each other. So hopefully this has been very helpful. We have our last group of, of uh, introductions here. The research grants are piloted for this particular uh, round. And so we want our research grant recipients to share again their team members, um, their research topic, kind of your general overview there, your methods, processes, your plans, scholarship plans. Um, and then, of course, again, your timeline and what your process is going to look like. Let's get started with uh, Georgia Gwinnett. Uh, Rebecca, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, so Thank you. this um, research grant comes from a transformational grant that we're still in the process of completing, but have piloted the template course. So this was for composition one class at GGC. We partnered with KSU. Um, I see Tammy on on the call, which is great. She's been wonderful and so good to work with. Um, also, Stephanie Denny um, is is here as well, and she and I partnered and developed this template and again collaborated with KSU. Jeannie La Bohannon, Tom Lilly, Mark Partridge are going to be other team members for the research grant. And so we're going to look at all of the information that we're gathering from the template course. It's our first template course at GGC in the English department, and it saves people a ton of money, but it also then gets everybody on the same page in terms of what we're teaching to our freshmen. And it raises certain standards and creates a common assignment. So it just makes assessment more streamlined. So we're looking for how did they do in this template course? Did they improve? What ways can we build a better course going forward? And we have information from the non-template courses that we can compare it to. And that's essentially it. If anybody else, Stephanie or, or Tammy, if you want to chime in, uh, feel free. But thank you so much. Yes, we're very happy to have some more funding and support as we continue to, to research. Absolutely. And thank you and welcome. Yeah, I was just pausing a bit too for your team if they wanted to, to share anything uh, additional. Thank you very much. And so we'll continue it along with uh, Kennesaw State. Dr. Lee, there we are. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Chigang Lee, Associate Professor of Information Technology from Kennesaw State University. Um, I have my colleagues for this project, um, Dr. Jack Zhang and uh, Dr. Shirley Tian on the call. Uh, we have Dr. Ming Yang, who is not uh, on the call today. Um, so Dr. Jack Zhang and I have been doing 
ALG since round one. Uh, I believe Dr. Jung was the one that who discovered ALG when it first started. And um, so we're one of the first participants. Um, it's been a long time we've done, um, not trying to compete with Tiffany, but we've also done <laughs> a lot of ALGs since then. Um, so uh, since we've done a lot of ALGs and uh, mostly our uh, focus area is in the IT or general computing area, and we've discovered some challenges um, over the years. So we're trying to do a research um, study on the uh, uh, factors that affects the uh, system sustainability of OERs in the computing field. Um, timeline wise, we're trying to get the uh, IRB and all that done uh, roughly by the end of this month so that we can start collecting data and uh, in the summer, we'll mostly be doing uh, data analysis and uh, start writing the reports and uh, papers and whatnot. And uh, for all the folks who are in the general computing area, uh, area uh, in this call, I'm looking at you guys. So uh, we'll be reaching out to you all, asking help, um, and hopefully uh, you will, you know, be willing to help us fill out our. Uh, surveys and one out for data collection purposes. Um, I think that's all for us. Thank you. Indeed, thank you very much for sharing uh, their plans there and giving us a heads up for what we should look for uh, with the survey and collecting the data, helping out with that. So our second uh, Kennesaw State uh, research grant team. Dr. Long. Hi, friend. There we are. Um, hi. Um, I'm uh, Jeannie Law. I am a professor of English at KSU. I'm here. I'm also the director of composition at KSU. I'm here with my colleagues, Tammy Powell and James Blakely. Uh, we're very grateful for this research grant that will help us better understand OER alignment in our English 1101 and even our 1102 courses. Uh, as many of you may know, KSU is the third or second, depending on whom you ask, largest university in the state. We have over 8,000 first year students who come through our English 1101 and 1102 courses. So we have gotten several uh, ALG grants uh, to help uh, students with low cost and no cost for their first year composition courses. And now we want to be able to research three things. We want to be able to research how well those OER template courses align with our new gen ed refresh that's coming out uh, now in January, right? We want to analyze the pass rates of those OER courses uh, writ large versus non OER courses. And the big thing that we want to do with this research grant is we want to look at the AI infused assignments within these OER courses that some of our recent ALG grants have afforded us to do. Um, as many of you know, KSU is pursuing thought leadership in the field of prompt engineering and AI infused OER assignments. Uh, we have a research team at KSU uh, who is already, um, I'm part of that research team. We're already uh, surveying and uh, interviewing students and faculty. Uh, Tammy Powell is part of this as well, and so is James Blakely. We've gotten over 1,200 student responses to our survey about AI. Uh, we folded our OER work into that as well. We were just quoted in the Chronicle of Higher Ed. We presented at Open Education, uh, Open Educa Berlin. So we really kind of pursued and leaned into this idea of uh, generative AI in higher education. So that's going to be the big thing that we look to measure, and then we're going to come back uh, to you all at Affordable Learning Georgia and ask for more money <laughs> to redesign a bunch of these courses so that we can expose thousands of students uh, to OER that is AI infused. Um, so that's kind of what we're doing. Um, we're doing survey as methodology. Uh, we're also going back and looking at alignment of assignments in these courses as part of our methodology. Our timeline, uh, our IRB uh, has already been approved. Our survey has been approved. We're going forward with that this semester. And then we will be analyzing the data this summer and uh, completing the report by the end of the summer. Um, and one more quick thing, uh, Tammy and I are also uh, working 
on a, a research project for prompt engineering. So I'm looking at all of my colleagues here on the call today and saying that uh, we have a three hour workshop slash webinar that we piloted at Open Education, uh, Open Educa Berlin. It comes with a KSU digital badge. We want to be able to teach you how to do a prompt engineering method that we have developed for writing that uh, we'd love for you all to earn this badge. And um, that's going to be part of our, our OER work as well. So I'll come out of PR mode. And Tammy, if you want to add something, James as well. Um, we're just, I, I'm real excited to lean into this AI research. Hey, everybody. I'm just glad to be here. It's nice to see so many familiar faces. All right. Anyone else on the team? Oh, there we go. There's James. Hi, James. Okay, here, here we go. Here. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Here it comes. Hopefully. Maybe not. But we are running. We're, we're running short sure. on time, so perhaps gotcha. we need to move along. No worries. No yeah. worries. James is certainly our expert. And one more quick thing I will say is James is a graduate research assistant and a TA, uh, and he has uh, it, he has embraced AI with course design and course assessment in ways that are really going to inform how I think OER uh, looks going forward nationwide. So we're real excited to have James as an expert on this on this project. Very very good. Thank you so much. Very exciting. All right, so in the interest of time, we'll keep moving along with our third Kennesaw State research team. Uh, Chelsea Dickerson, please see. Hi, yes, I'm here. Can you all hear me? There we go. Yes. OK, great. Hi, everyone. My name is Chelsea Dixon, and I am the scholarly communications librarian at Kennesaw State University. So I'm working with my colleagues Christina Clement and Sabrina Davis. And this is our first ALG research grant, of course, since this is the first year that the research grants have been offered. Um, with our research grant, we will be conducting a qualitative study to discover advocacy and sustainability strategies for OER creators and librarians. And so our web survey will open in February once our IRB is approved, and we plan to submit our findings for publication in the Journal of Librarianship and Scholarly Communications. Thank you very much. Very succinct, but the very practical of information, though. Thank you very much. Um, and lastly, we have Georgia Southern. Hey, thank you. I am Nikki Cannon Rich from Georgia Southern, and I'm here with my colleague Autumn Johnson. And our team also includes Virginia Rowling, who is our faculty member. This project, and we're so excited to be one of the first recipients of this round of research grants, and very excited that they are now a part of ALG. Thank you. But we're building off of a former project that was all ALG funded. Our faculty member, Virginia Rowling, did a complete OER with the help of Autumn, her subject librarian for a fashion fundamentals class. And that went over so well. And then Virginia and I took a certification program on open educational practices. And so we incorporated an open pedagogy assignment into this. And that went incredibly well with additional instruction time and face-to-face -face workshops with both of the librarians on this team. Just overall completely positive results in engagement and the students' attitudes and everything else. But due to instructional shortages, this course is being moved to an entirely asynchronous online format. So we're going to be comparing to see if we can reach those same levels of results utilize an entirely asynchronous instructional techniques um, and how those work in introducing the students to the concepts of open and creative commons licensing, publishing open, and of course the information literacy aspect of it with their liaison librarian. So special attention will also be given to the level of interactions the students have with the project and the materials without that face-to-face -face instructional component leading them through the different aspects of the course. Very good, very good. Thank you so much. And I appreciate everyone who paid, uh, who stayed, stayed with us for, for the introductions. I think that's very important. Now, um, I'm going to turn it over to Jeff because the next section pretty is, is pretty informative and pretty important for um, how you're going to move forward in the project. So please pay close attention, take good notes, and um, I'll pass it along to you, sir. 
All right. Um, thank you, Nikita, uh, for supervising this entire part of the meeting. As you can tell, it really is the substantial portion of it. Uh, we do a lot of the OER training asynchronously, and then we bring folks together to share what they're doing synchronously. Um, we had a breakout session planned for the end of this. I don't think we're going to get to it. That's OK. Um, that was more about you know, sharing your fears, seeing uh, how you're uh, which barriers you're thinking you may encounter and, and getting some feedback from folks. But as you've seen, there are so many cool people here that you can get in contact with and uh, and talk about amazing stuff from open pedagogy all the way to uh, AI in OER. It's real neat. Uh, so what I'm going to talk about here is the paperwork. Uh, luckily, we've already done the service level agreement process. Those are a lot of them are still in process. Um, either uh, where the institution is still in the process of signing or where um, legal is currently in the queue to sign a uh, service level agreement. Uh, but yeah, that's that's where all of that is at the moment. If you have any questions about the service level agreement, please do get in contact with us. Uh, contact both me and Nikita uh, to make sure that this is on our radar. Uh, yeah, so the first thing is that when you email us about your grant project, be sure to include your grant number on there. Uh, there are multiple reasons for this. The first one, the very easy one for me to, to, to illustrate, is someone sends me something and says, hey, we haven't heard about um, our invoice uh, for our project, and you give me like a chart field for your own institution's thing, and I look at it and I'm like, oh, I have no idea. I have to go and maybe I'll look up your name or maybe I'll look up the course and then maybe I can find the invoice that's connected to that. And then maybe I can get to that and then get back to you. Uh, I can much more easily do it if you say, hey, we're part of M225. Um, we uh, like to know about the initial invoice. I can go to M225. Ah, they have the initial invoice right here. Uh, this is in process over here. I can let you know exactly what happened. The other thing is that let's say that you're on one project and one project alone. I can search for your name. Sure, that's fine. But like Tiffany is illustrating right here, uh, some people have been on more than one project. Uh, if you're at KSU's uh, IT department, you may have been on these projects since round one. Uh, and so finding out exactly which project you're talking about is very difficult for us to determine until we've got your number. Uh, so it's a three digit number. If you have like a five digit number, that's your institution's thing. Um, this is uh, for transformation grants, uh, something like 635. If there's an M on the front of it and then three numbers, that is that means mini. That was the old way of doing it. But because we want to make sure we have a uniform numbering system for all of them, it's still M. Uh, that's a continuous improvement grant. RG is research. The reason why it's RG and not R is because R often stands for rounds. And so if we say uh, research project R24, well, it's round 24 too. So that would be very confusing. Uh, same thing with reviewers when, when they review applications. It's REV because otherwise it sounds like round 35. Well, that didn't even happen yet. And you have a name. You are not a number but it is way easier for us to get to your question quickly if you include that number uh, on your communications, especially when it has to do with paper. Uh, the invoices. So invoices are not from you. Um, you're not invoicing us directly. They are coming from your institution. They're usually a PDF. They usually have an invoice number. They usually have an invoice date, and they're for 50% of the award most of the time. Some institutions, like to bill us for exact amounts that they spent uh, after a certain period of time. That can work too, uh, but typically 50% of the award up front, 50% of the award uh, at the end for the services in the service level agreement. This is not an expense report. If you send us a big table uh, from your grant software that says exactly what expenses have happened, nobody can pay that. Uh, we, we need an invoice that has that number, that address, uh, it, it's on official letterhead. It's all of that. Um, so yeah, uh, these are from your institutions. And uh, 
in a way, that's good. You're, you're able to ask somebody else to do that. And you don't have to make it yourself. Um, these invoices are not from you or from me. They are from the institution. They are usually from either your grants office or your business office. If you're big enough to have a grants office, it usually comes from them. If it, if you are small enough to not have a grants office, it usually comes from the business office. If you're really big and there's a research foundation, that's not who it should come from because our service level agreement is between us and the institution, not us and the foundation. And what happens if the foundation uh, sends us an invoice and we don't catch it is that accounts payable looks at it, says this is from the foundation, we need a new invoice. So it just delays the process a little bit. Uh, Georgia Tech has a Georgia Tech Research Foundation. Um, that's really cool, but we have our invoices with Georgia Tech themselves. All right, let's keep going. So there are usually two invoices. Sometimes there are more if you do exact amounts. Um, but the uh, first invoice gets sent after the SLA is signed by not just your institution, but by legal services over at the USG and sent back to the institution. Um, we usually get those back from legal within a month of sending them. We usually send them as soon as we get them. Uh, but if there is anything that gets backed up further than a month from when your institution signs it, let us know. Uh, we will check on that and see where it is. Um, with invoices, we send them to accounts payable and they usually pay them within a week. Uh, that uh, so long as the invoice is correct and it's from the right people and it's got the right dates on it, it should be just fine. Um, at the end of your grant projects, uh, at the deadline, we'll let you know uh, through an official email. Thank you for completing your your project. We're ready for the final invoice. At that point, uh, we would send them in. If you have delays on your project, it's a little bit more emaily than uh, than usual, but it still works out just fine at that point. Um, these payments are sent through an electronic payment system through ACH. They come from the University System of Georgia and other payments also come from the University System of Georgia for things like STEM grants. And what happens is they all get sent in one transaction sometimes. So your grants office might be like, hey, we never received this payment. And so long as you include the grant number, I can then go in see exactly where that payment was. And usually what has happened is it's been lumped into one payment with other stuff. So they're looking for a payment for exactly your half of the grant amount, but really it's more than that because they also received STEM grant three, and things like that. Um, so that's a little bit of inside baseball, but it's about how the invoices flow from after uh, the SLA is signed and from after the final report is sent in. Now we're going to talk a little bit about reporting. For transformation grant projects, you submit a semester status report. Uh, this is because transformation grant projects are larger. Um, they tend to involve uh, some really intricate planning when it comes to getting things into the course and making sure that that course is you know, ready to go for that launch period. Um, with continuous improvement grants, sometimes that's the case but often you are improving the stuff that's already been launched. So we need to make sure that things are going well each semester with transformation grants. Um, if this kickoff meeting took place in December, I would have said you don't need to follow the December deadline because you just got started. Uh, your first report is going to be in spring of 2024. It is in May and, it is, and the uh, deadline for that is on the Grantee Information Center page. It's an online form, it is through Google, so if you happen to be in May out of the country in a place that firewalls Google, be sure to fill it out before then. Um, if not, let me know through email and you can send like a, a Word document to us. We can figure it out. Uh, but there are some countries where this has happened. People have not been able to fill out their Google form. That's OK. You just let me know. Uh, most of these things are multiple choice or short paragraphs there. It's it's low stress. We just want to make sure that everything is going well. So we need your info. We need to make sure that you are who you are, um, who your team members are, and uh, you know what's your semester, what's your final semester. Has there been a problem uh, with that? 
And then a lot of, is it on track? How's your materials review going? How's your hosting going? If you're thinking of, you know, making a website and hosting it or LibGuides, uh, how's the course redesign going? Any other work, catch all questions. Um, really important, if your personnel has changed, um, that we know that there's somebody else on your team. Um, and also if there have been big impact estimate changes, especially with transformation grants, you may have uh, suddenly 200 more people who are going to be affected by this per year. That's awesome. Or 200 less people because holy moly, something happened. Um, that kind of thing, let us know. If it's a change of like five students in the semester, that's not significant. You don't have to let us know about that. Um, and then the final report is due for everybody. Now we have the transformation and continuous improvement final report templates up on the Grantee Information Center page. Um, I'm going to copy this link real quick and I'm putting it into chat just so that you see that URL again. Uh, this is the place where you go for all of your reports, all of your templates, all of your deadlines, the Grantee Information Center. This survey will have pathways for our transformation grants, continuous improvement grants, and research grants. The research grant final reports are in development. They are not done yet. Once they are done, uh, we will be sending you those directly before we put them on the site uh, to let you know exactly what, uh, what they look like and how they are. If you read the RFP, that is what it's covering. Um, we just want to make sure that we have a good template for you uh, as we move forward. Uh, so I won't be showing off research grant templates, but that's okay. Uh, it'll be mid-month we're going to be starting development on that. Now for submitting your final report, first thing, go to the Grantee Information Center. Um, with transformation, there's five things you should have, maybe four, maybe three. Uh, the first one you should definitely have is your Word document that has your transformation final report. So you want to take the Word document, fill out that template, that's going to be your big narrative document. That's the thing that we use to gather qualitative information. Um, that's, yeah, that, that is kind of the details uh, for you. Any uh, data files that you want to submit. We do not share data files with the outside world the way that we share syllabi, um, the way that we share your final reports, uh, especially because with that kind, uh, with the volume of projects that we have, we would need a huge level of scrutiny to make sure that we have absolutely zero personal identifiable information uh, done in these big data sheets. That's OK. Uh, we if researchers would like to use what we have uh, for data files, we can do that and then they, we can make sure that they are anonymized, uh, but we are not going to be sharing those out in public the way that we share uh, the other stuff. Um, your syllabi. So the same thing, uh, just share it here. If you have one course, just share the, the Word document or the PDF there. Um, a zip file, if you've got uh, two or three, because there's only one space to share your syllabi, just uh, share it in a zip. Very easy to do. Um, with your syllabi, you want to make sure that these are translatable to uh, kind of faculty blueprints moving forward. The reason why we want your syllabus isn't to see the uh, uniform statements uh, that are like now five pages long um, from your institution. We want to see how your course is organized and how you're using the OER that you're using. That way, when other faculty come in and say, oh, OK, well, this project took place. How did they use this OpenStax textbook? Um, you know, what was the what was the order of things? Which chapters did they use? Which didn't they? Uh, did they remix anything? Did they send people out to a YouTube video? Um, that's the really important, cool stuff about sharing a syllabus. So even if you have a separate document that's a course schedule, that's the really helpful thing for us. Uh, you can have a photo of your team or class that we can share uh, on the website. That's optional. You don't have to. Um, you can also send in your second invoice if they're already ready to do that at your institution. That's not usually the case, but we have a space for it just in case, so it's optional. Uh, for continuous improvement grants, you need your Word document uh, for sure. And if you have materials that you're going to share uh, locally, you can uh, share them through the online form if they're small enough. If they aren't, you can always work with us uh, to share those. So 
you can combine all the files into one zip and send them over. Uh, you can do it through email if it's under about 30 megabytes. But if you want to use a Google folder, Dropbox, Box, any of those work just fine. SharePoint gets a little wonky uh, with permissions, but you can make it work. Um, at that point, if we can download them, we can share them out. Yeah, we don't really care so much about the method so much as that we get the documents themselves. Um, the reporting deadline. So the next one is the middle of May. Uh, then summer is the middle of August. You probably want to get it done before the middle of August because of schedules, but we give summer folks enough time uh, to get their data and to take care of finals before they're able to you know, submit a final report. And then in the fall, it's the same thing. It's far after uh, everything else has already stopped, right? Most of the time, your final exams and all of that are done by December 20th. And just about everybody's almost off the boat, holiday break by then. But we want to give you as much time as possible before the holiday break uh, comes in to get those. In. And these deadlines are always on the Grantee Information Center. We're going to have a 2025 deadline uh, soon enough for uh, spring 2025. It'll be there. Um, bookmark that page for sure. It's right there in the chat too. And we will email this link uh, as a follow up too. We have a midpoint check in meeting. This is the first time we've ever done this. This resulted from discussions with champions, uh, discussions with grantees, uh, and from Nikita uh, moderating this and coming up with some ideas too. Uh, folks often will say that they have come into a kickoff meeting. They feel like they're part of a community. That's really good, but then they're alone until the final report. And so what we're doing is a check in meeting for y'all to, to see how it's going. It's again a Friday and again, it's 1 to 3 p.m. Um, this is just a, a way for us to all get together and uh, you know, address any issues that have happened, regroup, uh, bring any questions that you have, any concerns that you have. If you've got some cool stuff that's already done, this is your time to show it up, which is really fun. Um, I, I'm looking forward to this check in, these midpoint check in. I think that they're going to be very nice. And I won't have to talk about invoices during it. Maybe a reminder or two, just a little. Now, the listserv, you will be added to this along with all the previous awardees. If we send out a message through the listserv, um, it usually will have in the subject line who it pertains to. If you've already finished your project and we are emailing somewhere in 2026 and you're still on this list, that's totally fine. You can be on the list for as long as you want. But if we say all current grantees, then that means uh, if you've already completed this project in round 24, we're not asking you for another final report. Um, but all grantees could be everybody. Uh, if there's a research opportunity that pops up. Uh, there have been some folks who wanted to know how it was to get an Affordable Learning Georgia grant, see how it was going like on national level. We've sent those uh, messages to grantees before. Um, so then that would be all. Or if I just want to get in contact with one round, it's just going to be one round in there. That's it. Uh, so be sure to check the subject line. Now, if you have any questions about, let's say, your service level agreement, uh, let's say that there's an emergency going on at home. Uh, don't send it through the listserv. Um, send it just to me and to Nikita so that we all know and that we can work on it. Um, but it's not broadcast to many, many, many grantees all the way back to round one. Now, we were going to do a breakout session. Instead, if you have any questions or any uh, issues or hangups that you think are going to really get in the way, please do send it to us. Uh, please do reach out to your colleagues, to your folks here, uh, to your champions, uh, because folks want to help for sure. Um, if anything, especially if anything goes wrong with personnel or on your team, contact us, uh, me and Akita immediately, uh, so we can start working on that too. Um, I would love for us to have a discussion where people share the issues that they think are going to happen, and then others can kind of chime in with what they've worked on before and how they can help. Uh, but we do not have time for that today. It is 2.58. So I am going to instead open this up to say thank you and also open this up for any questions before we leave. And I will step out and hit mute now so that you can do it.
Crowley says, will you be sharing the slides from this presentation? Yes, we will be sharing them uh, through our email and on the Grantee Information Center. It'll be accompanying the uh, video, which we will also be sharing. Getting a lot of thank yous. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nikita, uh, for running the biggest and most substantial part of this meeting, for sure. Uh, thanks, Tiffany. Well, if any questions do come up, I'm sure that Jeff would agree that you can definitely send them to us directly via email. And if it pertains to everyone, perhaps we'll send it back out and share it uh, to the whole group. But thank you all so much. Yeah. Thank you. I am going to stop the recording now. Here we go.